fstoppers.com has teamed up with Alaya Licardi to create Photographing the World 3, the ultimate photography tutorial on all things landscape and cityscape photography. You're watching the behind the scenes series on the creation of this full tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about the full product, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. We had finally finished filming in Dubai, and it was time for us to get on an airplane and head to our final shooting location, New York City. And during our layover in Turkey, it was my turn to experience the Sky Lounge. I, I did not think this was going to be as cool as it is, but uh, you guys were right. This is this is the best. It's good that they kind of build this in its own little private area because otherwise there would be too much shame for Alaya to continue. I know, I just really feel like when athletes are playing, they mm -hmm. don't hear the commentary. Oh, you can hear me on there? Yeah, I can. Oh, I'm and, sorry. And, and you know oh, what? No, sure. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. Like, it's like, it's like, this guy takes the field, and he tackles what's-his-name, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Oh, and it's okay. like, but he's ashamed because he was an alcoholic, and he just took a sip of the wine, and like, all this. I, yeah, I know yeah, everything yeah. that you're saying. Oh, okay. I'll be quiet. So, no, no, no. That's fine. Like, no, like just, say just, something. I just, uh, I'll, I'll be totally quiet because I, I want to see your true potential, so <laughs> I'll, I'll be quiet now. All right. Oh, he hit, he, he hit it. He hit it. So good at this. Thank you. <laughs> Damn, man. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm going to admit that was much better than me. Like, it clearly has an arc. You know what? I, I still feel like it's it's digitally it likes Lee more. And now it's payback time, Patrick, because I am also going to take a shower in an airport lounge. The fun was over, it was time to get back on an airplane, and we finally arrived in New York. So this is a two bedroom place, Elia and Naomi are here, and this is a relatively small bed. So tonight Patrick and I at the bar played rock, paper, scissors one more time. Finally, I won. This is Patrick's bag, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this out of here for him. Because this is no longer his room. Let's get this out here. The next morning, we woke up to three giant bags of new gear from B&H. So now that we're up in New York, we have once again changed tripod systems. We're just giving all of these tripod companies a go and seeing which ones we like. Uh, for this leg of the trip, we have the Manfrotto 290 Extra. And then we also now have a really right stuff. I think this is the TQC 14. And both of these are like their carbon. This one's carbon fiber. This one looks like it's magnesium. Um, we're still using the same Manfrotto heads that we like. These are just tiny little fluid heads that pack up really small, but <clears throat> these are going to be the tripods that we use for this leg of the trip, and we definitely have an opinion on the last three tripods that we used for the previous part of this trip, but at the end of this we'll do a big review and, and tell you exactly what we thought. Both Patrick and I are wearing snowboard pants because it is so freaking cold here in Manhattan, and we're about to go out for dusk and night shots of Brooklyn firing back in Manhattan. And of course, Patrick brought along the infamous moon boots. Baffin needs to send me my own pair. I want the FS logo. The signature. The signature, yeah. Like the signature series. Polar proven series. All right, so what's your setup here? So I have the D500, which allows us to shoot- The four, new D500. The new D500. <laughs> yeah. um, 
this allows us to shoot 4K for B-roll, but right now I'm shooting at 1080. And then I have it mounted to the new uh, Tamron 70 to 200 2.8. I don't even know if this lens is out yet, but this is their new redesign of the 70 to 200. And uh, so Plastic far- Plastic is still on it. Yeah, uh, in terms of design, it looks super slick. It looks more like their, uh, their prime lenses and everything. So I definitely like the, the look of it more. I love that this collar is a lot smaller. Yeah. Um, it also has one of these Arca Swiss mounts built into it. So, yeah, so if, if you were using Elias tripod system, you could just lock it down without a plate. But uh, So I'm on our standard setup that we have used for like four years now. D750, Tamron 24-70, uh, and then audio, of course, we've got the Sennheisers. We have a new lab mic now, so we're using the same Sennheiser G3s, but if you can remember, that's uh, when we were in Italy, we were having so much trouble with the road mics. Uh, the cords just aren't reliable at all. So we have upgraded to the MKE2, I think, lab mics. It's top of the line lab mic by Sennheiser. And the best part about the lab mics is they are super small. They're actually the exact same size as the road lav mic and therefore we can use all of the same accessories that we love so much made by road with the new sennheiser mics and the cables are actually robust and super thick so hopefully they won't uh, break like all of our road mics have but we're out here absolutely freezing to death and alaya is i'm just trying to do stuff with cold hands it's horrible yeah but this is the new fujifilm gfx camera yeah, this is the first time this is made the behind the scenes, I guess. This yeah, is it the... just started shipping like a, a week ago. This is a prototype model. This, Wait, this camera is shipping already. I, I believe from last week, this lens will be out in two months. It'll okay. be out by the time this behind the scenes comes out. This is the 23 f4, which is an 18 millimeter lens. So it's the widest lens you can get for medium format, but it's all prototype. So some of the parts aren't final you have to double check everything the autofocus can be weird because the firmware will be updated it was probably updated when this shipped but this version of the camera we had available three months ago for testing gotcha so it's always funny when you when you're using the test gear everybody's like oh mostly awesome to test prototype cameras well is awesome but nothing works like the final version Welcome to New York, everybody. Right now, we're on the Brooklyn side taking a look at the Manhattan skyline behind me. This is a really cool spot for photography. It's called the Brooklyn Bridge Park Pylons. What's really fun about this lesson is it's the first time I'm gonna be using the new Fujifilm GFX 50S medium format mirrorless camera. So this is a 50 megapixel camera and it shoots in a different aspect ratio than usual. I wanna show you guys the true reality of landscape photography. Are you ready for me to to break the ice and, and reveal what's really going on here? A lot of you are probably going to be shocked. Maybe not too shocked, but this is really what it looks like at this beautiful location. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's like at least eight photographers out here shooting the exact same thing. And it is like 20 degrees. It's snowing at times. The wind is horrible. My hands are frozen. My phone's about to die because the battery is so cold. But this is what uh, landscape photography looks like at some of the most iconic locations. Well, what's really interesting here is shooting all of these different versions. I have a long exposure version where I have the soft water. I have a still version, a version without the neutral density where I was able to freeze the sky and freeze the water in motion. And now I'm shooting a blue hour shot. In the end, Elia was able to capture an incredible shot and that night, we got to eat at one of New York's most famous pizzerias. So right now we are at Grimaldi's, which is one of the two pizza places you have to go to if you take the photograph we just did um, over by the uh, the piers. So it's literally, what, a three minute walk? All right, Aliyah, after all the trash talk on pizza, are you ready to try <laughs> Wait. some real Brooklyn pizza? Well, so here's the thing. Already looking at this, this is better than any Italian pizza we had. The next day, Alaya found an even colder place for us to shoot. It's like 30 degrees outside New York. We're going to the top of the rock, and I'm thinking, whose idea was it 
to go up there in frigid temperatures, and then I realized that it was my idea. Whose idea was this? This is freezing out here. And we're about to go all the way up there. What's up, everybody? We are still in New York City in sub-zero temperatures. Ironically enough, every country we've shot in in every season, even winter in Iceland, New York City now in March is officially the coldest location we've ever photographed anything in here in the entire Photographing the World series. How's it coming, Patrick? It's coming. We don't get a good shot out of one of these cameras. Yeah. Definitely done something wrong. That's right. Not only was it cold, but we also had tons of tourists to deal with. Yes. Even a police officer. One, two, three. I right, gotcha. Great. Thanks very much. Yeah, no worries. Appreciate it. So right now, the camera's set up. I'm right here, close to the edge, and I have a level horizon. The sky is really boring. That's not gonna do, so anytime I have a really boring flat sky, I like to compose more of the foreground, or in this case, more of the city, and keep out as much of the sky as possible. So I want two-thirds city and one-third sky. So if I move this forward, and I start to tilt this down, the issue is, as I start to tilt down, you can see that I get this really infinite perspective view. So it looks like a vertigo view. And now, if I tilt down this far, leave a little strip of sky on the top, there is no way that I can correct my vertical lines. If I try to distort this to fix those edges and make them straight like we usually do in all the other shots, it's gonna be massively distorted. All the squares are gonna turn into rectangles with pulled edges. It's just going to look horrible. So what I'm gonna do instead I'm gonna level this camera back out and I'm gonna show you guys how to use the shift feature on the lens itself to mitigate this effect. But what I can do is I can just come over here on the right side of the lens in this case. And remember, that'll change positions as I rotate it. So it could be on the other side. You wanna make sure that you're going to grab the shift function. And in this case, it's right down here. And watch what happens when I start to shift down. As I start to shift down, you can see that instead of what I had before of angling the camera down, as I start to shift down, my lines stay perfect. So I can have a deep perspective of the buildings themselves, maintaining all the lines perfectly vertical, perfectly straight, and I can adjust this so that the composition is exactly like I want it without having to worry about any distortion whatsoever. After knocking out Elias' first lesson ever with a tilt shift lens, we went to another incredible New York restaurant. How does this compare to the food in uh, Italy? Dude, come on. Come that doesn't on. even make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Whoa, Elias just said that? That doesn't make any sense at all. No, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, it's damn good. <laughs> the variety. So tomorrow, Elias has to teach a lesson on the Gigapan here. And instead of just like putting the camera on there and doing a test run in the apartment and making sure the basics work, it takes it takes 50 pictures and everything, he would prefer just to hit the move button and spin it around, and then he's like, I'm gonna go to bed. Wait, wait, and wait, I, wait. And I have a feeling what's gonna happen is we're gonna get out on location in the dark, shit's not gonna work, and then it's gonna become a problem. Patrick, Patrick, in my defense, check this out. The next the next cut in this behind the scenes video is going to be us on location and there's a 50-50 chance it's going to be going well or it's going to be a disaster. He gave it 50-50. Those are good odds. Let's find out. 6.30. It's 20 degrees out. feels like 14 and there's a blizzard warning coming. You ready to take some photographs? I've heard people say this is their favorite part of the behind the scenes is watching you get up for morning sunrise shoots. I'm glad that I can bring you all a little joy with my misery. That's fine. Let me... You know what? This thing is wonky. I'm gonna, I will run through it before we do anything else, because I'm not sure it's going to work. Way off. Like 10, 15 degrees off. So this thing will not stitch together like this. Then it's messed up itself. Yeah, but then it's messed up. Are you sure? 
then I'm saying that the, the bushing inside of this is off. There's no way to twist it any tighter than that. It's like you screw it on like a tripod. There's nothing special about it. Things were not looking good, but Elia had never let us down before, and at the last minute, he figured out how to get it working. I'm gonna start, and camera on, yes. And as I hit okay, it's just gonna remind me of a few things. Is the balance locked? Yeah, white balance is locked. Is exposure locked? Yes, exposure is locked. Focus locked? Yes, focus is locked. I'll say okay, and it's gonna say taking panorama. And now, all I have to do is wait for this thing to go. And you can see it's gonna go to the upper left. It has camera control, so it's gonna take one shot. It's gonna move down, it's gonna take the shots. I'm only doing one shot because this is a very early morning golden hour panorama, so I don't need to do any type of exposure blending on this. And with panoramic work we've already done, we had maybe somewhere between five and seven tiles. If you wanna do exposure blending or need to do exposure blending with five or seven tiles, that's very doable. But something like 48, I wanna make sure I can lock it in with one exposure. And in this case, I underexpose just a hair like I usually do with the X-T2 or the Nikon DA10 because I know if I need to pull those shadows up, it's not gonna be that hard to do in Lightroom. I really wanna avoid any kind of complex exposure blending unless I need to. So if I was shooting right into the sun, then we might have to do something a little bit more complicated. But thankfully, this scene is beautifully lit, nice golden light on it, and I think everything's gonna to come together perfectly with one exposure. We just wrapped up final lesson in New York. We got three lessons here. It's been freezing. It's been a challenge. And uh, oh my gosh, my hands are so cold. I've been having to run the iPhone, which requires me to take my hands out of my gloves. And I don't know if you can even tell. I feel like my face is so cold. My lips aren't moving correctly. So I think we're all happy to be done. Yes, finished. Done. Not only was this the last lesson in New York, it was also the final lesson for photographing the World 3. As I expected, this was another incredible experience with Alaya. We got to travel back to Italy. We had an amazing time in Dubai. And even though it was freezing cold in New York, we really enjoyed ourselves. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching Photographing the World 3 behind the scenes. And if you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com store.